Hey y'all, what is Tammy? We call her Valley Cooks tonight. We're making a big supper. So let's get started and get it ready. Now, the first thing you do is you think about what you're going to make. I'm going to be making biscuits, which takes 20 minutes. I'm going to be frying up some steak. I'm going to be making some stewed cabbage and some creamed potatoes. The number one thing that takes the longest is the biscuits. So we need to go ahead and get those mixed up, get them in the oven at 450, and go ahead and start marinating our steak. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my cube steak, put it in a pie plate, and I'm actually going to tear this apart and let this be four steaks, okay? So there's one, two, three, four. We have a local Ingles and their meat is so tender. You never have the gristle part in the steak. It's wonderful. So there's four pieces of steak. Let me rinse my hands off. We're going to pour some buttermilk on top of it. And then we're going to start mixing up biscuits to get them in the oven. Oh, I need to put me on an apron too, don't I? All right, so let's just pour a little buttermilk on these. I'm also going to flip them in it. So that they're coated good. So when you cook supper, you want to go in an order so that everything gets done at one time. So think about how long it takes to make everything. Now we're going to sit this over to the side. Rinse our hands. Always have water in your sink so that you can clean up fast, okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is mix up our biscuits and get them in the oven. You said you were going to get an apron. Oh, I was going to get an apron. Yes, I was. I don't know how clean this apron is, but I'll wear it backwards. Does it matter that I have a tag? That just makes me more tammy, right? Aren't these earrings cute? Show them to them, Chris. These are those um, paparazzi earrings. I got the earrings and a necklace for five bucks. Aren't they cute? I thought they were so cute. Now, I didn't get this necklace for five bucks, but anyway, uh, Chris says, go ahead. Enough of that. All right. So, we're going to mix up some biscuits. This is self-rising flour. I'm going to put in about two cups of self-rising flour. I just opened that flour. We've got some nice beef broth to cook with tonight, too. We're going to take about a quarter cup of shortening and put in this flour and... Uh, Use our blending fork. I'm already making a mess. And we're going to blend that shortened into the flour. The blending fork does better than any utensil I have ever had. Even, yes, better than a regular fork. If you get one of these and you use it, just use it a couple of times and you'll be in love with it. It's probably what we've sold the most since I started my show. Of course, we don't sell them, but y'all can buy them through Amazon on our website at www.colorvalleycooks.com. Anything on there is things that I like to use in the kitchen. So a lot of people love these things. They're nice to even flip the steak with. We might even do that since we're going to be finished with our biscuits by then. That's good. That's all the time it takes. You want it to have some hunks in there so that your biscuits will be fluffy. This is going to be my all-purpose area tonight. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. I am going to grab my buttermilk. Um, let me fix the buttermilk in here first. So you're going to add buttermilk to your dry ingredients until they're just sticky enough to hold together. You're not going to want them wet. Now, if you were making a hoe cake in an iron skillet, all just one big biscuit, you would want it to be kind of wet like you would cornbread. But that is not what we're making because we're going to make some gravy tonight. Add your buttermilk a little bit at a time, and if you do that, then you can never go wrong and get too much in there. That's going to be the perfect amount, I think. So you're just going to use your fork, and you're going to blend it until all of that is off the bottom and into the dough. And then it's about right. Now what you're going to do, while you've got a finger that's still halfway clean, Grab you some shortening and grease your biscuit pan. And 
and I'm just gonna lay it right there on the edge of my bowl. Now, next thing we're gonna do is take our sifter and sift our surface. Sift our surface. Sift flour onto our surface. How's that? Flip these out. And you're gonna need them about at least seven times. And really, that's what makes the flakiness nice tall biscuits when you uh, need them. Uh, I don't know where my new cutter is. Did you put it in here, Chris? Mm -hmm. We're gonna use my new cutter. This is actually an antique that I bought the other day. So cute, look at it, as cute as it could be. So we're gonna use it. Anyway, if you get that shortening and you make sure you leave the pieces about pea size, then you're gonna have a much prettier biscuit. Let me bring this over here for y'all. You're gonna have a much prettier biscuit. Um, it's gonna rise up prettier because the shortening in the oven actually makes it rise. And I don't want to get too much flour in this dough, so I'm just kind of working with it like it is. This old biscuit cutter does a good job, y'all. I'm going to just roll these two with my hands. And that is white lily flour. White lily Maybe. flour, shortening, self-rising self flour. It's already got everything in it. And I'm going to take just a little bit of buttermilk and pat the tops of them. <sighs> yeah, some of us in the family say Granny used water on top of her biscuits. I said she used her buttermilk. So some of us are on the fence about it, but I'm almost positive she used her buttermilk. I don't think she would have put water on. All right. I'm rinsing my hands so that I can pick them up and get them in the oven. Your oven should already be preheated to 450, okay? So we're gonna slide these in the oven. Step three. Next longest thing to cook is the potatoes, and I can't even find my paring knife, it must be dirty. Um, I had to peel these potatoes with, uh, we have not ran our dishwasher in a day. So, Chris, make sure you kind of go down since I'm, um, I've already washed these. And um, if you peel a potato, you have to put them in water if you don't, they'll turn brown before you cook them. Um, this is not my favorite paring knife, but we're going to use it tonight. So, go ahead and um, have your potatoes ready if you can before you start. And if not, that's just one more thing you got to sit down and take the time to do. But it takes me twice as long to use a... Um, potato peeler to peel a potato than it does if I just use a knife and peel it. It slows me down. You mean put the timer on the biscuits? Good. Um, yeah, set the timer for 20 minutes while I'm doing this. Have arthritis so this is my least favorite thing to do I like to cut them in half and then slice them it's easier on me faster and easier on me this is a little bitty pot I really should have got a bigger pot but it just happened to be laying here from last supper last night Chris made hot dogs um, so I grabbed it and I'm gonna use it so most of you probably wouldn't use one this shallow, but it's wide. We're almost there. We're going to put these on the oven. Uh, well, stove top is what we're going to do. And I'm going to simmer these. It usually takes potatoes a good 10 to probably about 12 minutes or so once they start 
simmering good, boiling, before they're done. And you need to cut them thin so that you don't have lumpy cream potatoes. If Chris will show you, I've also got over here, ready for my potatoes, a mixer uh, on the counter so that when we get these off the stove, it will be handy and ready for us to mix them up, okay? Because we like them light and fluffy, and you can really do that good with a hand mixer. Um, I'm going to put just a tad bit more water in here. We're going to put this on the eye. Back here in the back, I think I'll start it on the front because it's warmer. And then we'll slide it to the back. This is what I'm going to do my cabbage in. This is what I'm going to do my meat in. So let's hop over here and wipe off our counter and we're going to cut up this cabbage and get it started. Then once the cabbage is started, we're going to start frying our meat. I always pick up the trash can and use it when I'm working usually and put it handy to my work table. And you don't want to grab your warm wash rag out of your water. You want to put some cool water on it before you uh, use it on that uh, on that flour. If you don't get it cool, it'll make it sticky and it'll be kind of messy to clean off. Okay? So you actually want your water to be a little cooler, not hot, when you're cleaning up flour. It comes right up. Except the crack. I'm not going to worry about that for now. We'll get that later after y'all are gone. All right, we're gonna need that flour again so we can't put it up. So now, let me dry my hands good if I'm gonna have this knife in my hand. And we are gonna chop up some cabbage. Let's go ahead, um, turn on our skillet to preheat. I'm gonna put it on medium for now while we're cutting this up, and then we're going to throw a little butter in there and some broth. Um, almost every night, I try to have something green. It's either collards, turnips. Uh, this cabbage has got a black place in it, so I'm not cooking that part. Um, it's either collards, turnips, peas, green beans. Um, but typically, we have something green. With every meal, we usually have one starch, and one green. I'm not cooking that dark part, y'all. I'm just not. Because I'm picky when it comes to that. And I don't have no pigs to give this to, so y'all just chill. But I'm putting it in my trash can because it's ugly. Alright, so we're going to chop this up. Whoa. That not slip got Good enough. Amy won't probably eat this. It'll just be me and Chris, so I didn't get a whole lot off that cabbage head. I, I should have inspected it, but Chris actually bought this cabbage, not me. See that dark spot? Mm -hmm. All right. And a lot of y'all might eat it, but I ain't going to. Okay, so here's my stove top. I'm going to turn this on so y'all can see better. We're going to throw just a little bit of butter in here, let it melt. We're also going to grab some broth where Chris cooked a beef roast. It's got a lot of beef, it's got a lot of fat. Now that's a sealed up broth, ain't it? Woo, it's sealed all right. Let me get me a big spoon. Now when broth is sealed like this in your refrigerator, it'll stay in there five or six months for real. But now once you open this seal, you better use it within a week. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this grease because it's going to be good in our cabbage. And now this is real stock because I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I don't want, I'm going I'm to put this on the counter for now. But it's like jelly. That shows that when I cook the meat, that I let the bone. Wendy. 
blender in the pot. So if you've got chicken or beef or pork, whatever you're using, um, if it's like that, that's some good stuff. Okay, that's plenty more than enough that we need. I'll put this back on here because we're going to use this too a little bit in our gravy tonight. Oh yeah. Matter of fact, I might pour up a little of that. Put it in. Well, I don't know. We might leave it in. All right, let's turn it up. Get it hot, hot. Good thing about using your own broth is it's already got flavor and stuff in it. And it tastes good. So save it when you're making something, y'all. Don't throw it out. Don't pour it down the sink. Keep it. All right, we're going to salt and pepper this a little bit. And then we're going to go start our steak. Little salt. I'm not going to put too much salt because there, that broth might already be salty some. But we love pepper and cabbage, okay? So that gets that. Get us a spoon. And we're just going to let that sizzle for a while, okay? We're going to let that sizzle till I have to have the eye for something else, okay? It's taking this a while. I'm going to put a lid on it. So it'll get hotter quick. Let me turn it up. It'll start boiling over in a minute. All right. Meat's the only thing we got left, y'all. So it's going good, going good, going good. Now, tonight, I'm doing something a little different because I want these to be real crunchy. And that is, if you've got, this is Pepperidge Farm uh, stuffing mix. Now, this is actually cornbread stuffing mix, but I would probably have used just the regular had I uh, been prepared. This is what I got in the cupboard, so this is what we're using. This is a bag for a uh, crock pot. I am completely out of gallon storage bags. That would be normally what I would use. But now that I bought this at a, what is it, Chris? Now that I bought this at a store, it's going to be nice to use on my crumbs because it's so heavy. I'm loud, y'all. My dogs are going to start barking. They're going to think somebody's at the door. Really? easier just pick it up and drop it now these things are expensive to purchase and y'all can purchase them on our website but if you go to a, a thrift store you can probably get one cheaper if you can find one okay all right that's going to help flavor our meat at the same time that it makes it crunchy We're going to put it in a pie plate, just like that. Now, what was I going to do with this onion? I guess I had a bright idea that I didn't use it for. Anyway, um, I'm going to put a little egg in here, a couple of eggs. No, I wasn't supposed to do that because I got buttermilk. Well, I've already done it now, so I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to waste Lord, I got it in buttermilk and forgot and then beat up an egg. Lost my mind. That's what happens when you're old. What kind of dressing did you say this was? Dressing? Or, uh, it's Pepperidge Farm uh, stuffing, stuffing. But it's the cornbread type. Cornbread stuffing type. Okay? Alright, we're going to start rotating this stuff. getting hot enough that I can and then I'm gonna turn this one back on it's doing good everything's doing good so we're gonna hop back over here oh lordy I'm crazy I'm supposed to do the flour in that one I think I'm gonna bring this one over here and have it next to the skillet because that's gonna be the last thing we did Now I gotta get another plate. Lordy B. 
really, y'all, there's no need to have the egg and the buttermilk. The buttermilk is better than the egg because this fries fast. I'm probably ain't even not going to use the egg because I just want to lightly coat this with flour. Not a lot, just lightly. Enough that it's going to cling to the, here I go, I'm going to jump over here, cling to this. Let me just bring it back over here. I'm on my mess. So you really just want enough flour on it for it to pick up the stuffing, okay? So we're going to press it in here. Now, it smells so good. And see, that's already got a lot of flavor to it, okay? The buttermilk and the self-rising flour, believe it or not, the flavor on just those two things alone is absolutely amazing and then when you put this stuffing on it as well you just can't go wrong y'all now you could always use this is the same thing i do when i do my parmesan chicken except i use italian croutons and crush them so if you think if you can think of something that you would like better on your beef than stuffing then go ahead and pick it up at the store okay Or just put flour. Or just put salt and pepper and some steak and chop and onion powder on it. Don't put no garlic powder on it. Chris hates it. <laughs> Don't you, Chris? Yep, I'm going to taste it. He does not like garlic powder at all on any food. Only thing I've ever been able to get by with putting garlic powder on being married to Chris was um, garlic bread. <laughs> That's about it. I like fresh garlic. Yeah, he likes fresh garlic. He just don't like the taste of uh, garlic powder or garlic salt. And he don't like lemon pepper salt either. So I never could cook with those after I married him. But he used to wouldn't hardly eat nothing. I mean hardly nothing. No vegetables or nothing. He married me. Now he'll eat just about anything. Somebody asked about, do you need to add baking soda uh, to the biscuit? To the, if it's self-rising. I'm using self-rising for everything. I use it for everything except pie crusts and cookies. I pretty much use my self-rising flour all the time. But she doesn't add anything else to it. But you don't have to add anything else to it because it's got it in there. Okay? Some people still do. Granny used to put a little soda in it. Yeah, baking soda. All right, let me rinse my yeah. fingers off. She may, have, she may have said baking soda. I, oh, I can't, okay. I can't see the comment now. All right, y'all. Our biscuits should be getting pretty close to getting done. Our potatoes are nice and boiling. They'll be done in a few minutes. This is starting to cook up good. It needs to be turned up higher because you want to cook all that liquid off of that, okay? That you can. Let me mash it up some. And then you want to make sure that's preheated before you put your oil in there. And we're going to fry up our steak. We have everything going real fast at one time. Let's look at our biscuits. They are done. I don't know how many minutes are left on them, but they're done. Five. Let's see. Yeah, they're fun. done. No, they're done. Mm -hmm. Done enough for me. So, let's flip them out. I don't... All right. Biscuits are done, so we can start the uh, meat and then make our gravy, okay? So, I'm going to bring the meat over here. And before I start, just so that I'm not stressed out too much, I am going to put these two things up in my... Uh, see. You just show them the food for a second. I'm going to put these in here. Okay. Driving me crazy. Have this pan smoking in a minute. Turn it down on low for a second. Alright, y'all. Me, uh, I can rinse this off and flip the steak with it, but there ain't no sense in me uh, 
having such a mess. When I don't have to. Just because y'all are watching, y'all need to see what it takes to cook. Okay? Did you turn that down? I did. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's still hot, ain't it? Yep. All right. I'm going to put a little oil in here. Now, when you fry steak, you know what? I might put a little of this good old oil in it. I don't think that. You don't? No. Why? You think it's unhealthy? I don't even think it's beef. I think it's pork. You think it's pork? Yeah. It might be. You made a beef roast and a pork roast, remember? Yeah, but the beef roast wasn't in there. Oh, yeah, it was. I poured too. it up. It yeah, I poured up the beef and oh, the pork. Okay. I think that's beef. I could. It probably is. I don't know. It might be pork. Either way, it's going to be good. All right. Let me turn this up a little bit. Now, don't over fry your steak. Steak like this is delicious, but it's not as good when you cook it to death, okay? There's no reason to. It's thin as it can be. It's a good piece of meat, okay? So it ain't light. You've just got to. This is going to soak this up, so I'm going to have to put some more oil in it. Let me hurt this But you don't have to um, cook it today, okay? What's that going to do? Put some more oil in it. Where's my oil? That's olive oil. This is this is regular corn oil. Alright. That's very really sticky. Lord, I thought I turned it up. Did you turn it back down? No. I'm getting on to my husband, y'all, and he ain't even doing nothing. See, it's getting brown, nice and brown. You want to make sure and not cook it too. You only really need to cook it a couple minutes per side. I'm going to let this be in there about 30 more seconds, then we're going to flip it. There it comes again. Lord have mercy. Time to meet. No, the oven coming. Oh. That one's split. It's so tender. Why don't you get a spatula? Well, I'm trying not to make something else dirty. I'm determined. I'm going to make a mess. All right. Somebody would like to eat it, probably. All right. I'm going to put just a little bit more oil in here. And then we're going to start 
getting the broth ready for our gravy. This looks like it's about done, y'all. Look at it. Holy smokes, I'm about to burn it. Let me turn it off. Where's my shoes? I gotta get me something steel to get that up. That's what I need to deglaze. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. Not really burnt, it's just stuck. Still brown, it's not dark. All right, there's our cabbage. It looks good. And it's gonna be good. We're gonna slide it to the back, turn the style. All right, these potatoes are done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide our cabbage back to the back. This is almost ready. I'm gonna, excuse me, I'm gonna drain these potatoes and get them started. We're just gonna let them sit right there for a minute in the sink. Let me grab something to put our steak on. I'm out of paper towels, I do. Do you bring up that strong last time you brought them? No, I don't think it is. Let's see how this looks underneath, y'all. Okay, never do nothing perfect when I'm live. I always mess up something. Always. I'm going to wind up be obeying my husband. <laughs> you know, this is a non-stick thing, so I'll try not to scrape it or nothing. See, it looks a little dry underneath there, don't it? All right, let's just get it all out. I could have used a little bit more oil in there, y'all, but it's fine. To get that gravy on it. Yep. Now we're going to make some gravy in the same skillet. I don't know if that's pork fat or beef fat. It's probably pork as much as it had on the top of the thing. I wouldn't doubt it. And yes, I'm going to use this. Let me be a little careful with this thing. A little more careful. This pan is okay. I wouldn't give it an A plus rating. But I like to use it because it's big. So like if I'm frying up a lot of stuff at one time, it's easier than having to make two batches or something. And that's why I use it the most. Um, but it's not like my favorite thing in the world or nothing. You can't put it in the dishwasher. If you do, uh, just, you get in trouble. Okay, so we're going to use some uh, flour in here. And some of you would make brown gravy, but I'm just making the gravy that I grew up on. Because that's what we are used to and that's what we like. Put just a little bit more, and then I'm gonna salt and pepper it. Yep, I can smell it now. Can you? The pig? Mm -hmm. Can you smell the pig? I have to melt in there anyway. Now, if you've got beef broth, of course use it. We're making beef steak. But I used what I had in the refrigerator. And that's what you ought to do. You ought not spend your money unless you have to. It's going to be good no matter what we use because it's homemade instead of out of a can and it's not out of a bullion cube. 
which I like to use. Don't get me wrong. I like to use them, and they're probably better for me in the long run. But let's turn this up on high and get it started good. That cooled it down. Some. That was regular milk. Somebody asked about what kind of milk. Well, it's skim milk. It's regular milk. Mm -hmm. Regular skim milk. Let's put a little butter in it. Why not? Let's just be all bad. But I just get worse and worse on a for our health. Then we're going to mix up those potatoes. We're going to be able to eat supper. If you got a silicone whisk, I don't like them as far as really trying to beat up something with them. They don't work good. But they work good if you've got a non-stick skillet and you need to use one, okay? But if I had my rathers, I would have used a steel one. And she does have cube steak on here. It is cube steak. It is a mechanically tenderized beef steak, okay? So now we're just trying to get this to thicken. It was cold because of that jelly uh, stock. Now it's starting to get hot. Once it gets hot, it's going to thicken. Okay? You usually, the ratio to your flour and your shortening or your grease is usually one to one. I just eyeball it. I've never really used a recipe, but of course we have recipes in our recipe books for gravies. So that you can get it right. Okay, I don't think it's going to get uh, much thicker than that. We're going to pour it up. We're going to cream our potatoes. I call them cream potatoes. I don't know why Mama did, so I do. Come around and hit this up for me, baby. I always had to pick things up with my left hand. Um, and pour this way because my right hand is not as quite as strong. Okay. There's our gravy. And we're going to mix up our potatoes. Sorry, everything looks so messy, but it's live, and that's what happens when you're live. You see it all the good and the bad. But you can't learn to cook on these cute little cooking shows. Uh, Cause you, how can you put a whole meal together? Cause they never do that. They show you one thing. They have everything prepped like if they work in a restaurant before they even get started. And nobody at home cooks like that. They've been at work all day. They've been busy. Put some salt in there. Put a little pepper in there. Put some uh, butter in there. That's real butter, not margarine today. And most of the time, I just use my milk out of my milk jug. Pour some of that in there. Now we're going to use the beaters. And these things are strong, and they'll splatter, and it's just the way it is. That's why I do it in the sink. without using a mixer to mix them up. Never. Okay. She just didn't, y'all. Yummy. Let's taste them and see if they got enough salt in them. And then we're going to make us a plate. Nope. They need some. Not a lot, but a little bit. I already put my mixer up, so let me just mix them up a little bit with this. Good thing I got a, a dishwasher, ain't it, y'all? all I know. 
and it ain't crisp. Let me get me a good plate. What color should I use? All I got is white, I think. I think all I got is white. It would look good if I had a black, but you know, hey, it is what it is. So, cabbage. Uh-oh, what? Yeah, it's falling apart. I'm going to grab it. Mm. Lay it on here. Okay. Go ahead and put the taters on here. And... biscuit y'all. Isn't it pretty? So y'all want Chris to have a bite before we go? Chris can you please at least take a bite before we go? And he don't always like being the guinea pig but I like for a man to tell me how he likes it once in a while. All right. Hop on over there, baby. <clears throat> Woo, here's the cameraman. Everybody say hey. Hey, hey, hey. You gonna cut it with your fork since it ain't uh fall, since it's falling apart, ain't you? Mm-hmm. Lord, it's wonder you didn't get burnt, boy. How is it? Does it need salt? Nope. It don't? Mm -mm. What does it need? What do you think about that coating on it? Because I usually just do salt and pepper. and um, It's good. Is it better or? No. It's not better. It's just good. It's good, yeah. But it ain't no better than just regular. It is really crunchy. It is? Yeah, like when you, I mean, you can see it's, it's crunchy. Yeah. It has a real, real. Open up a biscuit for them, Mr. Nichols. Y'all look at this fluffy biscuit. Now that needs some butter and pear preserves on it. We'll have mm -hmm. to get them out of the fridge. Or some gravy. There's a Let's girl that, gravy over the, whole the thing. same girl, y'all, that uh, I bought these earrings from makes us pear preserves and mails to us. And that cabbage is awesome. Is it's it? Good. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right, y'all. This is an amazing supper. I don't know how fast I cooked it. But I tried to do good and not take too long for y'all. Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful night. And thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Bye. Y'all buy our cooking books if you don't have one. Love ya. Bye.